Good morning. It is time for episode 51, Tina Book Tuesday with author Lisa Prysock. I'm coming to you from Kentucky in my dining room this morning, and I'm drinking a blueberry tea. It is a blueberry infusion loose tea by Elmwood Inn. I hope you have something to drink that you enjoy. I really like this tea. It's kind of a it's a loose tea, so you have to put it into a tea bag and then let it steep, but it has a lot of flavor, so I'm really enjoying it, and I wanted to share a little bit about um, my upcoming release, Bell of the Ball, from the Brides of Pelican Rapids series, and um, what I wanted to share with you today is something that it has inspired me in the writing um, from some of my ancestors, and they are here in the picture behind me. I'm going to try to um, back up a little bit so you can get a better look at that photo. So um, that is my great-great-grandmother and grandfather, and there are three daughters. The oldest one is in the middle, um, Evangeline, and then on... My far right, which would be your left, is my great-grandmother Lillian. And on um, the other side is my um, great-aunt um, Gladdy. And so really want to talk to you about Lillian. Lillian's husband, his name was Chester, and he, he fought in World War I. Um, he was actually at the Battle of Bella Woods. In World War One, which is which was one of the worst battles of World War One, and he was one of very few to come back from um, the war that survived that battle. And one of the things, though, that inspired me in the writing for Bell of the Ball is there are two islands mentioned in the book, and they're the second island becomes of really great importance to the heroine because she doesn't expect to find it. And my great-grandfather, Chester there, uh, who married Lillian, not th that's her father, Lillian's father in this photo, but the one that she married, Chester, that fought in World War I, he um, did some farming I know they raised chickens and had a garden. I know she was a school teacher for a time. I know she used to um, pack as many children as she could into her car when they um, had a vehicle, and she would take them off to church. Uh, I know they were Church of God, good God-fearing people. And I knew great-grandmother Lillian. I knew her very well, and she was a wonderful lady. Um, she liked to sew and cook, and uh, my mother always said if you came to visit and you were family, she'd put you to work doing something, which which rang true even for me as a young child. I can remember going to visit her house, and she would send me out to, to get something from the grounds that, that could be cooked or prepared for a meal, and... One of the interesting things about her husband is that they lived on the banks of the Mississippi River and they had access to an island there, a little island. And my uh, great grandfather, her husband, used to plant potatoes on that island. And so that is the second island mentioned in the book, it was inspired by m my great grandfather, uh, Grandpa Chester, and they called him Chet. And then the first island in the book has to do with the heroine and her parents who were the South Carolina rice plantation farmers that I mentioned to you. So um, there's a, a lot of neat stuff in this book. Um, I also wanted to mention that there are some strong Christian themes about being careful about the words that we speak and the words that we sow. So I really hope that you'll enjoy it and I look forward to sharing a pre-order link with you soon. And if you got to see this video, uh, please give me a shout out or say hello. I would love to hear from you. 
And thanks for joining me today for Tina Book Tuesday. Have a wonderful weekend.